Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another abandoned bunker run. And I, yeah, I thought I'd just test a few things out. This is my first run with a pistol. So yeah, I thought for fun, let's make a Hitman edition. I'm sure most of you guys know who the Hitman character is. He's in the Hitman um, games. He's an assassin that usually uses a pistol and sniper rifles. Um, didn't think a sniper rifle would be a good idea in the abandoned bunker. But we basically went for advanced handguns, advanced running, advanced thievery, and advanced medical without any stealth. Okay? So, like I say, this was my first run with a pistol. I am going to make a few mistakes, but I thought I could use this video to give you guys a few tips and just let you see that even if you're not good with a sword or a bow you can still do this with 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 aiming okay so i'm trying to do headshots to save as much ammo as i can i'm showing you guys how i do it from the outside just to show you guys that there's a bunch of puppets and yes um in my personal opinion, I've spent a lot of time in the abandoned bunkers testing different things. I feel very comfortable with them. I'm at a stage now where I want to loot them naturally and not just go for the armories. Although, um, a lot of you want to see the armories. And I can show you guys a few things that you might have not known at the armories and with a pistol. Nice focus mode shot there. So yeah, I definitely think there's a lot of things that they can make more difficult. Um, one big thing is the puppet spawning in the walls. If you don't own your own server, you might not know this, but every time people enter a bunker, there's a bunch of puppets that spawn inside of the walls. Um, that puts a lot of pressure on the server, so there's something they can do with that. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not crazy about, I'm never crazy about puppets just spawning in, okay? So I'm doing this at night with a flashlight, <clears throat> probably like the Hitman would do it. Um, so yeah, the, the noise level, mini game, and all of that is quite entertaining to me. But the, the way that the puppets just spawn in when you're not at a certain location, I'm not crazy about. And I was thinking about the fact that they can add certain rooms almost like a kill box. And if you fail too many times, then it must become mayhem. But what I'm thinking is instead of dropping the puppets down like with a kill box, where the puppets come from above, I'm thinking that they can have certain locked rooms that you cannot access, and once you fail a mini game, like, one door opens, okay? In level one, that, that a bunch of puppets come out of and search um, the area, okay? So, so they, like, actively um, search who, who let the alarm go off. Um... You know, then if you fail twice, then maybe at the stairs, you know, another door opens with a bunch of puppets. Um, maybe the razors can stay because sometimes the razors disappear, okay? So they can implement the razors a lot more. And then, yeah, the more you fail, the more puppets spawns, okay? Because at the moment, I just feel that the longer you take... Or the longer you're in the bunker, the worse it gets with puppets that are spawning. I just cut the video here because it was a server restart. And, um, yeah. Like, yes, I know because I've done a lot of bunker runs, you know, the casual player is still going to struggle with this. But, I mean, that's why, that's why I'm here, to teach you guys different things. And, of course, the desks are always a fantastic place to look for the level 1 keycard. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of possibilities for them to make this more daunting because I feel the loot in the armories is a bit broken, okay? 
And the reason I say that is because I am by far not a very good lock picker, okay? You guys have seen me done do kill boxes on my own and stuff like that. But I do what I would refer to as luck picking. So sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm not. Where there's a bunch of players in the game that can lock pick really, really good. Um, and then the keypad game, you can't fail more than once. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of depositories, so you can fail that a lot. Um, but like I say, at some point they should make it where it's almost impossible to carry on with a journey or just make it a ton of fun. It does feel like a lot of fun when you stay here very, very long. Um, but like you guys will see, I'm going to do this run in about, I don't know, 25 minutes. If, if everything went right, I could have done it in about 15 minutes. And yes, the only thing that you have to focus on, the reason I'm not cutting the searching is because the only thing that you need to focus on in the abandoned bunkers is continuous noise, okay? It's not really about your noise level. It's about how continuously you make noise. So that's why I take a break every time I search a box because I see the sound meter going up and then I wait for the sound meter to go away. Like you can see while I'm crouch walking, the sound meter is very, very small. Um, but it's more about continuous noise at a certain level. Now, crouch walking the way I am without stealth isn't really attracting the razor until I do it for very, very long. So it's almost like when you make a noise, there's like a bar. It's like you're throwing water into a can. And the more you make a noise without letting the sound bar go empty, the more you're filling up that bucket. And then at some point, you're going to trigger um, a noise. And then if you keep on making a noise, then the razor's going to come down. But if you just take little breaks in between the noise, it's as if you're just giving that bucket time to go empty. It's like every time you don't make any noise, you poking a hole in the bottom of the bucket and that bar that activates the razors being heard in the vents um, goes down. Like, I made, I made a heck of a lot of noise there, guys, with my suppressed pistol. And yes, the puppets can hear me in my vicinity, but there's no vent noise, okay? Um, of course, if you make a massive noise, then the, the thing is, if you shoot a gun without a suppressor, then that, that, that bucket gets filled up immediately because of the amount of sound that you're making, okay? So once you shoot a gun unsuppressed, that bar falls up immediately and just, you know, spawns a razor immediately. But if you never hit the threshold, if you don't make too much noise, like a gun without a suppressor, to hit that threshold at the top, then you can make a lot of noises as long as you let the bucket run empty by not making any noise in between. Okay? So... Just, ima just imagine that. There's a bunch of holes in the bucket. Every time you make noise, you f like, while I'm crawling, I'm filling up that bucket 2% at a time. If I keep walking like this forever, the bucket is going to fill up because not a lot, of, not enough water can go down the, the bottom where I poke the holes in. And then I'll hear a vent sound. And if I don't stop again, even though I'm making very, very little noise, if I don't stop crouch walking, a razor will spawn, okay? And then if I shoot a suppressed gun, the bucket fills up with like 40% um, because I can shoot at least twice without activating the vent immediately. The, the razor is running in the vents. And then, and then once again, I, I, you know, I stand still, I keep quiet, I keep the noise low and, that and that, those holes at the bottom of the bucket make sure the bucket runs empty. So to simplify it for you guys, if you make too much noise, it hits the threshold immediately. 
and you will spawn a razor. But you can make quite a bit of noise as long as it's not continuous. Okay? And that's the thing that I want you to take away here. And I think the pistol needs to be shot at least five times for you to activate the threshold. Um, if you guys want me to test other guns, please do. But I'm going to take four shots here. One, two, three, four. Four shots to kill him, but no vent noise. Okay, very important. No sounds in the vents. So, it looks like you can almost shoot. Um, although I didn't shoot, shoot, shoot. I shot, you know, let the water run out, shot, let the water run out, shot, let the water run out. So, maybe, you know, maybe it's like 30% per shot. But I think you can probably shoot four times um, continuously before anything happens, you know, before you spawn a razor. Now, these black containers are really, really good. Okay. Again, no, 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 no vent sound when I shot, but vent sound because I was walking or crouch walking for a very long time and then searched, which also fills up that noise meter. Um, these black containers are really, really good, and you just have to come here regularly. Okay, that repair kit is about, a, that weapon clinic is about a thousand bucks. I'm going to get a BCU lock. That's about two thousand bucks. Um, yesterday I came in here and I found three, um, three stacks of BMG rounds. And because of their durability, they gave me different amounts. But it was like thirteen thousand for the three stacks. Um, it's always good getting coming here and getting the grenade and activating the quick slot so that if a person, if a squad or someone challenges you in these closed environments, okay, if they take you on one at a time, you know, then you can probably just kill one of them. But if you're lucky enough that a squad rushes you in a closed environment like this, then you can probably just, you know, like they at the top of the stairs, you at the bottom of the stairs, you can activate the grenade, hold it in your hand for like two seconds, throw it to above the stairs, and you'll probably kill all of them. Because a grenade has a very, very wide um, range and is very effective in, in a closed environment. Okay? So that's why that is important. And again, with all the tests that I've done, I feel like the, the amount of time that you spend in here has got a big influence. Again, trying to use the least amount of shots that I can. Here, I made a mistake. But I made sure I made no noise while he was passed out. And that's why I got away with this. I shot twice consecutively, but I did... You know, I did stay still while he was on the ground and I gave him time to stand back up. So I'm really focused on not making noise for a long time. But you guys will see that I, that I made a few mistakes here because it was my first run. Um, these puppets, you know, that can't get to you. As long as they aggro, you don't have to worry about them. The only puppets that can glitch through walls is the ones that are sleepwalking. Okay, that's the only way they can push through walls. So as long as you keep them aggro, that's fine. These lockers, again, are a very, very common place for the level 2 key card. But sometimes you won't get lucky and you'll have to search a bunch of puppets. And then this generator room is very, very useful for when, when poop, poop hits the fan. Okay, when you wake up Brenner, when you fail at the keypad, when you when you shoot your pistol and it aggro's him. You can always come back to this generator room, wait till everything is quiet, and then carry on. Okay, but you're gonna need a few fuses. I got quite unlucky with fuses here. Um, but for me, 600 and above are the perfect fuses to do the armories. Because every level up of a, of a fuse gives you four extra minutes. So a 200 fuse only gives you four minutes. 
but if you realistically think what you can do with the 200 fuse, you know, you can't do a lot within four minutes. So I don't mind getting a 200 fuse, activating, um, I think it's F upstairs, there's, there's a depository upstairs, okay? Um, so uh, even with the 200 fuse, you can still activate the, when you come in and you go right and right, there's, there's sleeping quarters, there an office and a depository. So even with the 200 fuse, you can still loot the depository. With the 400 fuse, you can loot the other two depositories um, in the B section. But you need a 600 fuse to power A, B, C, and G to get to the armory. So I like to use, I don't mind using a 400 fuse on level one because I know I'm gonna turn, you know, turn the fuse off or turn the power off on level one as soon as I get to the stairs. But I need a 600 fuse to get to the armory because 200 gives you four minutes, 400 gives you eight minutes, um, 600 gives you 12 minutes. I feel 12 minutes is more than enough time because I, you only get 15 minutes with the kill box, okay? So I feel 12 minutes is more than enough time and you, ne you never want to be greedy. That's the main thing here. You don't want to bring your chest in here. Every time you drag the chest, you're going to make a noise. You can do this repeatedly because I've showed you many times how I do it without a key card. So you can keep doing this and just play it safe like i'm gonna play it safe here if they were puppets here i would have shot them in the head if brenner if brenner aggroed on my noise of my pistol i would sprint to the generator room wait for him to you know wait for everything to relax replace the fuse with another 600 because 600 fuses aren't too hard to find and i know there's a cheese mechanic where if you do the right hand door then you can hide behind the crates where I'm looking now. You can go and hide behind those crates. I don't feel it's very realistic and I'm a purist at heart. I don't even like the fact that you can hit puppets through the gates, you know, the gates that you can open and open up and close. I don't even like that you can hit them through there. I think there's a bunch of those small mechanics that they can use to make it more difficult. And like I say, you can't fail more than twice here. I'm going to get unlucky because my first three combinations are going to be wrong. Okay, very difficult for me to do four. And I'm going to run before the door closes. Brenner is aggroed and I'm going to run to the generator room. Okay, and then once they fix the cheese mechanics um, that other people use, then it, I won't, it, won't, it won't matter to me. Um, now I just waited till everything calmed down and now I'm looking for another 600 or 800 fuse. I really don't think 1,000 fuses are needed. <clears throat> Maybe if a clan wants to be greedy, then they need a 1,000 fuse. But if there's a clan, they can just, one guy can just sit in the generator room, you know, and keep giving the guys power. So <clears throat> I think the 1,000 fuse is only when you want to loot the entire place. Okay, so I don't think you need more than 20 minutes to loot level one, but like if you want to loot the entire level two, <clears throat> everything, every nook and cranny, um, <clears throat> then you're probably going to maybe need 20 minutes. But for me, 600 fuses are more than enough. Again, I'm not cutting it here. Just to show you guys, you guys can see the time that I take between searches without any stealth skill that doesn't aggro, you know, that doesn't activate the vents. And again, here I show you that a 400 fuse is not enough because ABC, the sectors ABC takes 100 amps each, but G takes 200. So that's 500, okay, that you need to get to the armories. So you can't do it with the 400. There are, you know, there are ways that you might be able to do it, but once poop eats the fan, you want all those doors to be open, you know, to make your exit as smooth as my exit was. So I'm going to quickly search for a 600 fuse. 
And in my ultimate bunker guide, I showed you guys how to farm all, all the fuses, okay? I didn't do the armory in the ultimate bunker guide because I know how quickly you can do the armory, but I needed you guys to focus on farming the fuses so that whenever you come back to a bunker, you come to the bunker with 200, two 600 fuses. And then you can do one of the armories in like 10 minutes if you don't, you know, if you don't, if, if you, if, because you've got a 50-50 chance, you know, there's six combinations, you can only input about three, some people can input four, but that doesn't matter. Let's just keep it at a 50-50 chance. If you're lucky with the, you know, with the 50-50, then you can do it in about 10 minutes. If you're not lucky and you have to run away and wait for everything to calm down, you can probably do it in 15 minutes, okay? But again, I think that the the thousand fuses is basically just if you want to like really, really spend a lot of time in there. Or maybe you want to come in with a hundred, um, like three yellow screwdrivers and 120 lock picks because you're very, very bad at lock picking. You know, then sure. But for the for the average player with a bit of skill or someone in their clan that's all right with lock picking, I think the armory is, is personally for me the easiest. And I'm 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 I'm, I'm don't know how I feel about it being the easiest. I feel looting all the depositories is harder. Because if I try and loot the two big ones that's next to Brenner, he's going to spawn in any case. Okay, if I fail one of the two big depositories that's left or right of the of the of this room, you know, at the moment it's on my left. The depository is on my left. If you go right through there and go up again, then you're going to get the other big depository. If I fail that keypad, Brenner spawns in any case. Okay, so the, when I loot the depositories, there's a lot more chances to for Brenner to aggro on me. But I can get away from Brenner the same as what I can get away from him in the armory. But with the armory, I only need to be successful once. Where there's quite a few depositories in the in the bunker. So I feel that the depositories are a little bit more risky, if I can put it that way. And if you do all the depositories, you spend a lot of time in here, which seems to spawn puppets slowly but surely the longer you're in here so i would rather just may you know go one way and then a lot of the time succeed the first time and then the other half of the time just aggro him once wait for him to relax and then make sure i'm successful the second time okay if you guys are not sure what I mean about six combinations and that you can never fail more than once. Just watch my um, ultimate keypad guide that I've got on my channel. <clears throat> and here, these two lockers, there's one here and one behind me. These two lockers are extremely, extremely easy. Okay? So even if you're a bad lock picker, you can get a full gun kit from the one locker and a full gun kit from the other locker. It won't be insane. It will probably be pistols or SMGs or AS valves or something like that. But holy poop, brother, it's better than nothing. Okay? And even moving the items around makes a noise. Okay? That's why you guys saw I stopped when I dragged out the, the attachments. And then when I dragged out the, the ammo um, and the magazines, it triggered the vent. Because I was doing the continuous noise for too long. You know, so even if you even if you're bad at lock picking, you can get a full gun kit or a full pistol kit and something else that doesn't need a lock picking skill, which I'm going to show you right here. The first, uh, there's a lot of different items that you can get up here without lock picking. Up there, you can search this once, and there we get an M249. Okay. So, with no lock, with very bad lock picking, you could have gotten an ASVAL, a VSS, an M249, and whatever's in that other easy locker. Maybe SMG, maybe a pistol kit, maybe a revolver kit. And now, we're just going to do the 
the bronze locks as an average lock picker, which you will see. Okay, because I lock pick. I basically hold in F until it stops and then I move my mouse once or twice. I'm not like the pros that can tap that F key like 10 times to get to the sweet spot, okay? I can basically just leave my F key two or three times and hopefully I'm lucky. And again, I came in here with one yellow screwdriver and... No, well, one yellow screwdriver and seven advanced lock picks. Okay, seven advanced lock picks are very easy to find. And you can find advanced lock picks on puppets. You can find a lot advanced lock picks at the hospital. You can find 18 advanced lock picks if a, if a cargo drop ever lands close to you or if you compete for cargo drops. Okay. Very, 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 very easy to find. And if you did the depository run that I showed you in my ultimate guide, then you're going to get yellow screwdrivers in here. Okay. So the screwdriver is not going to be a problem. So, the silver locks behind me have got sniper rifles and RPGs and stuff like that. But, you know, the first time you come, you do the easy ones. The second time you come, which you can do in one day. Okay? You can do, I don't know, five, ten abandoned bunkers in one day. When you come, when you get a yellow, when you do the depository run and you do, you do get a yellow again, you know, then you go out come back because you've got a bunch of fuses now you've got the yellow screwdrivers and you've got the a bcu um, memory module to upgrade your intelligence and then you know you come back and you just do the the armory to save as much time as you can and then you just try the silvers okay whether you're successful with the silvers or not you can still do the easy one and you can loot the top shelf that takes no experience, okay? Or if you're feeling lucky, you can try and open all three doors. Like if you've got a lot, if you've got like four, six hundred fuses, you can do the first armory, just do the two easy lockers, you know, and the, the bags above. Go to the second armory, you know, run away. Go again, be successful. The, the loot up above and the two easy lockers. So you can have six full gun kits plus the three kits that they will give you when you loot the the satchels okay up above that you don't need to lock pick now imagine what the good lock pickers can get okay there is two ars here behind me is two sniper rifles or rpgs then we can go next door in the same armory next door where there's two ARs again, two sniper rifles and RPG. Then they can, you know, then they can put the loot away at their base or in their car. They can come back, do the next armory, okay? Which will give them a total of, there's four ARs in each room. So that's 12 ARs and 12 sniper rifles slash RPG slash C4 parts. Plus six full gun kits from the easy lockers, plus three surprises in the room above that's why i say guys for me personally i feel they can implement a lot more things to make this more challenging they are doing small changes you know as soon as they find out that there's too many cheese mechanics or too many exploits and they're trying to help brenner to be more dangerous here i'm just running past him and you guys will see it's my first attempt with a pistol because I didn't switch to my pistol. I mean, I've got a gun without any ammo in it. Um, I'm the hitman. I don't even have my pistol on me. And then when I got here, I was looking for the fuse box to put the power back on. I didn't even remember that the fuse box is downstairs. Okay. And I, I didn't equip my pistol. So you guys can see it's my first attempt because I was confused. And then still I didn't equip my, my pistol. And I didn't close this gate. I could have closed that gate to trap the razor. But even with all these mistakes, I can still back away from him and get the get the pistol and make a lot of noise. Okay. There I filled up the bucket, the vents are coming, the razor spawning, and I just sprint. 
Okay, I've got advanced medical. I can fix the C4 and the two and the C4 and the C2 that he gave me with three bandages. Okay, so if you guys want me to try other guns, please let me know. If you guys found this helpful, please click the like button. And again, like always, if you want to see and learn everything that there is to see and learn about scum, click the subscribe button and try and help me do this full time by maybe becoming a member on the Patreon down below. Have a lovely day, guys. See you later. Keep surviving.